That's right, y'all. Cowboy here, and we are back with another Monster Hunter World Build video, and today we are taking a look at the Insect Glaive. Now, the Insect Glaive is an incredibly fun weapon to play with, and also incredibly versatile. If I had to describe it in one word, it would be finesse. While any weapon in the game can take down a monster while it's on the ground and clomping around or knocked out, only one weapon can truly claim air superiority, and that is the Insect Glaive. Whereas typically a monster takes flight, you have to resort to flash pods. Insect Glaive don't care. Insect Glaive got places to be. Namely, on that monster's face while it's flying around in the air. As you endlessly sit here and juggle off of it. Actually, not endlessly. Five times. But the point still stands that we can jump on the monster's face and air juggle it. But before we jump into the builds, and that's right, I did say builds. I have a couple of starter variants for those that aren't loaded up on decorations. There's a couple of things that I want to cover regarding the Insect Glaive that are so important to the weapon that if you don't understand these mechanics, you will do less damage than every weapon in the game without question. And those things are the Kinsect buffs. Now, the Kinsect has three main extracts it can get that give you buffs. There is a fourth extract, green, which you get from hitting a monster's tail, and that gives you a small heal, but it is not a buff. As for the three main ones, we have red, which you will get from hitting the monster's head, and that gives you a damage buff, as well as changing up your moveset, very similar to how demon mode works with the dual blades. We have white, which you get from hitting the limbs, such as the legs or the wings of the monster, and that will both increase your jump height, as well as increasing your speed. Now, more importantly, having red and white together gives us a 20% damage boost, meaning it is vital that you maintain red and white as much as possible. So important that you're better off not even attacking the monster if you don't at least have red, ideally red and white up. Now, every time you grab a buff, it'll last for one minute. So we're at probably 30 seconds on red right now and about 40 seconds on white. However, pulling in the third and final buff, which you get from the monster's body, orange when you pull this one on in you can see red's about to run out pull on an orange and the duration of all three buffs are reset to one minute so ideally what you're going to want to do in combat is get red and white right at the start let that go for about a minute when red is about to run out snatch up orange bring it on in and then all in all that allows you to get close to two minutes of uptime on your buffs now on top of that, as you noticed, we have Extract, Recall, and Fire. You always want to use Triangle when you're looking to get an Essence. This is going to send your Kinsect exactly to where you have your reticle, have it pull on in an Essence, and extract it for you. On top of that, we have Fire, which you should use after your buffs are up. What Fire is going to do is it's going to mark the target with Pheromones, at which point your Kinsect will then continually attack the target. All in all, I find the Kinsect gets roughly 6 attacks in, uh, with this setup and as you can see it's leaving dust clouds now these dust clouds will vary based on the kinsect mine are blast clouds allowing me to cause explosions when i strike them but there's also clouds that can heal there's clouds that can do paralysis etc and it's important to note that you're not the only one who can attack these if your teammates hit these clouds as well they will also proc causing damage now that we have covered that, let's go into the basic combos. So the most damaging combo with the Kinsect is going to be pretty straightforward. Triangle, 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 circle. However, this attack covers a lot of distance. Look at that. We started at that shadow and we're all the way over here. So because of that, the combo I prefer to use most of the time, which actually does very comparable damage, is triangle, triangle, circle, repeat. Now this is an infinite combo, and as you can see... We have to do it roughly three times to cover the same amount of distance that we did with the other combo, which will allow us to better stay on the monster while doing comparable damage. Uh, on top of that, after every second hit of the combo, you can use circle and forward or back to do a dodge slash or a leaping slash just for some reposition type stuff. The last thing I want to cover is air juggling, because without proper knowledge of how to do your air juggle, you will fail it every time. Now, the most important thing is that the final hit of your combo is what connects to the target. On top of that, lock-on is incredibly useful when going after an aerial target, as it'll automatically reposition your camera for you. Now, if I get straight on my target and do circle, you can see how I didn't get to juggle, and that's because I hit it right at the very peak. Now, what you want to try and do with air juggling is wait until you're about mid on the monster like that and that gives the final swing of the insect glaive a better chance of connecting 
you can get five attacks in before it ends. On top of that, uh, you have your circle and your triangle. Your circle is going to be your juggle move. Your triangle is what you should use when you want to mount, just because it's going to deal more straightforward damage onto the monster and give you a better chance at a mount. That's not to say you can't mount with circle. It's just if mounting is your priority at that time, triangle has a better chance of pulling it off. So now that we've covered the basics, let's go into the build and show you what this thing is all about. So first up on the list, we have the weapon, and that's right, it's another Diablos weapon because you just can't beat that damage, and this is the Tyrannus Glaive 2. Uh, on top of being Diablos, one of the big perks of this is it looks completely badass. It's like a giant halberd, so you feel like a character out of Dynasty Warriors flying through the air. And not the new Dynasty Warriors, which was quite disappointing, but like Dynasty Warriors 4, where it was still badass and it felt fun. But anyway, the Tyrannus Glaive 2, hands down, excuse me, Glaive, I know someone's going to call me out on that. Uh, but anyway, this will hands down do the most damage in the game. You know, we're at 713, even with the negative affinity, it doesn't matter. We have two augmentation slots. Ideally, I would take damage and then health regen. Because after testing it, health regen turns out it's pretty freaking OP as a health augmentation. Way more OP than the Nier Gigante health regeneration. Um, but this is going to be a stamina Kinsect bonus. Now, if you're not going to use stamina, the other alternative I would suggest is a speed one. And I was using speed for a while and just recently switched over to stamina after finding out how it works. And I'll explain that a little bit later in the video. But this is what we're going to want to go with. As for our Kinsect, we want the Pseudocath 3. Now, there are a couple reasons we want this Kinsect in particular. One, its speed is 15, which allows us to quickly send it out and pull it back. Its power is at 12, which is pretty awesome. And lastly, it leaves Blast Dust. And this is cool because the Blast Dust, we can consider that just outright damage. It will just up our damage, leaving clouds of explosive powder everywhere. Moving on from there, Earplugs Charm 3. Now I know a lot of you are probably like, hold up, earplugs on an insect glaive? You know, it's not like we're charging moves like the greatsword. This seems kind of like a waste. And you may feel that way. But let me tell you this. Earplugs on insect glaive is the sexiest thing you will ever experience. Monster roars, typically you cover your ears. Nope, I'm going to shoot it in the face and wings and get two buffs. You're up in the air doing an air juggle monster roars. You ain't got no time for that. Your ears are plugged up. You're going to keep doing that combo on Mount the Sucker and bring him on down. It is so nice to have. And it's not that it's necessary. No, it's not. But it's an amazing quality of life having earplugs with the insect leaves. So much so that I found I had to work it into the build. Moving on from there, of course, we have the Dragon King eye patch because weakness exploits, super OP, blah, blah, blah. And then we have the Kushala Sista B and the Death Stench Heal B. Now we're picking up these two pieces of gear to have four handicraft. The reason for that is, as you can see on the Tyrannus Glaive, it puts us with just a little itty bit of white. <laughs> Moving on from there, Val Hazak Bracers Beta, not for peak performance, but because it has three level one decoration slots. And then the Basil Coil Beta for the two points in earplugs. Now pulling all that together and adding in our decorations, of course we have Elementless, Tenderizer to boost up weakness exploit, uh, flawless jewel, just because there's nothing that's really better to work into this. Three grinder jewels and sharp jewel. Now this is basically the linchpin of this build. You want triple grinder and sharp, and then the four points in handicraft. And what that's going to do, as I mentioned before, it gives us just a pinch of white. And what sharp is going to do is it gives us the protective polish skill, which means that when we sharpen our weapon, you'll notice that we get a white aura around the sharpness, See that, that green aura going up around the white? And that means that for the next minute, we cannot lose sharpness, ensuring that we stay at white damage on our Tyrannus Glaive, giving us massive, massive amounts of damage. And then obviously, when that runs out, one cycle, sharp, ready to go, and we can continue fighting. Uh, so put all this together, what do we got? We got earplugs at level 5. Monster Roars, don't care about them. Handicraft at level 4, just to get us white sharpness on Tyrannus. Weakness exploit at 3. Speed sharpening at 3. The two spare slots, I've gone with Vitality, just because if I'm looking at two levels on something, I think Vitality is pretty clutch. Uh, peak performance at 2. We got one from the Flawless Jewel, and then one from the Gloves. Protective Polish and Non-Elemental Boost. Now, obviously, this is a fairly decoration-heavy build, so I do have some variants of this. 
going over into the change equipment area here. Uh, the first one right here is a variant not working with Diablos. Now, this will do less damage, no doubt about it. But the main things we're changing here is we're picking up the Destroyer Bow 3, which also is an Elementless Boosted Glaive. It has Speed Boost as opposed to the uh, Stamina Boost of the Tyrannus. More importantly, we're picking up the Xenogiva Hide here, which will give us two points in Power Prolonger, letting our Kinsec buffs last longer. Now, I found this to be a nice alternative if you don't want to go the Diablo route. If you don't have the Pseudokanath, the uh, speed one, you may want to run an Insect Glaive that has the speed boost. So this is a good alternative set, while still providing excellent damage. <clears throat> Running the numbers, uh, assuming we're at white sharpness on both, and you can see I still have Death Stench Heal. We only need two points of Handicraft with the Destroyer Bow to put it into white sharpness. Whereas we needed four with the Diablos, so we had to sacrifice the Xenogiva Hide and Power Prolonger to pick up the two points handicraft. But at a 1.32 sharpness on all three of the glaives, we would potentially run with this build. I had 871 damage after sharpness was taken into account with the bow, and 976 with the Tyrannus. Now the Tyrannus dropping down to 1.2 is at 887, which is much closer to what we're running, so you could use the Xenogiva Hive with the Tyrannus and just focus around blue sharpness, but I figured if we're going to be able to push that up to 976, we might as well do it. Um, the final alternative loadout I have, and this is one that's really good if you're just getting into the high levels, and that is going to be a build using Vice. Now, a couple things have changed here. We still have earplugs. We still have Basal Coil, of course, giving us the level 5 we're going to need, but Vice comes with default a full sharpness meter. We got some white and some blue on there. So what we're going to do is run three priests of Xeno to get Razor Sharp. That'll help maintain our sharpness. Uh, and then working in the Hide and the Spurs gives us Power Prolonger at level 3. So all together, this will give you Razor Sharp. Uh, I slotted in some Critical Eye Jewels for more crit. Weakness Exploit, Power Prolonger. And, uh, of course, we still go for non-elemental boost. I put in Protective Polish, but it's not needed with this lineup. But I found this to be a really good entry-level Glaive build because Razor Sharp helps to mitigate our sharpness lost until we get a Protective Polish Jewel. And without having to work in the extra Handicraft, Vice is actually a pretty good Elementless alternative. A lot of people shit on this Glaive because of the low base attack. But if we were to look at the 1.32 sharpness, the fact that it already has 20% affinity on it, and that we can boost it with Elementless, adding in a damage augmentation, we can put this up to around 778. Which, just for the sake of comparison, the Destroyer Bow, the uh, this one that we were using, until you get two different attack augments, you would actually do more damage with Vice than you would do with a Destroyer Bow. A Destroyer Bow with only two attack augments on it will do less damage, even though that that's at a 605 not showing the elementless boost, and this is only 546. So if people say Vice is crap, tell them they're wrong and misinformed, because it's really not. Vice is a fantastic insect glaive and a fantastic weapon to start with. Uh, moving back to the build, though, the one thing I want to touch on here is going to be speed versus stamina before we move into actually showcasing things. So a lot of people seem to think that using stamina allows your insect to stay out longer, and that is simply not true. Uh, using speed or stamina it doesn't matter. The stamina bar that we have for our kinsect, which we can see just below the buffs, is going to last long enough that the kinsect can get out roughly six attacks. However, pulling it back will regain our stamina. We're down to one, pull back, Send out, pull back, full bar stamina, and just shooting it and sending it twice. And that is what a stamina glaive does. In comparison, going over to a glaive that has speed, which while I love speed, because we are at level 15 already, ultimately I decided to pass up on speed. Now this will send it out faster, there's no doubt about it. I can, like, you know, it's basically like a little lightning bolt sending this thing around, you know. Over there, yeah, go over there, yeah, go over there, yeah. But we already have speed at 15, so is it really necessary? That's up to you to decide. If you want speed, you can use the Destroyer Bow 3. Personally, I found I was fine without pushing it even higher, and I did find that I liked the stamina boost for what we're about to see right here. So as you can see, the Kinsec stamina is getting to the same level as before. Pulling it back, send it out. Pulling it back, send it out. 
pull it back. So it took three send and retrieves to get our stamina all the way up. And what this basically means is while the Kinsect's not going to stay out any longer with the Stamina Glaive, it means we can send it out, pull it back, send it out, pull it back, and then remark the target, therefore reapplying our Pheromone, and then ensuring that the Kinsect does end up getting out more blast damage just because of the effective stamina regain we're getting. So all in all, that is going to break down the build. Once again, just do the quick overview since I did go through all three of them. With everything right here, there's the current loadout. Main things here, of course, are Elementless boosting it up, Tenderizer for the level 3 weakness exploit, 3 points in Grinder for speed sharpening, Sharp Jewel with 4 points of Handicraft to ensure we stay at white sharpness, Peak Performance, which will further be augmented by the fact that we're going to augment our weapon with damage and health regen, and because of how many hits we get and the fact that we're in the air, Peak Performance actually works in pretty well, considering the only reason we have the first point is because we want the 3 slots for the Grinder Jewels, and then the second one via a gem. So, that's going to wrap it up. I know that was a lot of information, so if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Uh, definitely one of the longer videos I've done so far, but either way, let's jump into a hunt and show you just how effective this thing is. So to best show off the aerial supremacy of the Insect Glaive, what better monster than the King of the Skies himself, Azure Rathalos. So let's uh, go get our food. I really hate when the uh, tail riders just drop you off in the middle of nowhere. Like if you've already eaten, it's not that big of a concern, but it's so annoying when that happens. Anyway, let's get our buffs up. Oh, put that on a little too early. It's okay. Um, so obviously I have Rocksteady. And I know a lot of you are probably like, why are you running Rocksteady? You already have earplugs. And the thing is, even though we have earplugs, Rocksteady also gives us uh, no flinching which is just really nice to have in general, especially early on in the fight, because it's going to ensure that you know, we're getting out uh, we're getting out our damage. Let's go ahead and do a quick sharp just to apply that speed sharpness. And one thing which I didn't touch on before is using the right trigger in your opening move. So using the right trigger will send out the Kinsect. Let's get this asshole to calm down for a second. There we go, there's our white. You notice that when I'm up in the air, I can hit X to reposition. So I can fly over, basically do like an air dodge with X, and then go into the circle attack. Old Azurath. Always annoying, because he wants to just fly around a bunch at the start. Oh, I backed up. I was hoping to get them out there. That's down. We'll swap to immunity. And let's go on and reapply our pheromones. Hey, we got a mount. So when you mount with the insect glaive, what's actually nice to do is instead of just tapping Y and doing little ticks of one damage over and over again, you can actually use the left stick and continually uh, basically just dance across the monster's back with the insect glaive doing considerably more damage and you can still bring up uh, you know make it all the way to where you do your slash fury doing this go ahead and get the speed sharp reapply that. Now since he's down, I'm going to do that triple triangle circle combo I was talking about. Do that little back hop to reposition there.
building up our stamina real fast. Oh no, we let him grab us. No, wait just a second, because buffs are about to fall off anyway. An important thing to keep in mind, too, is we're not augmented with this weapon either, because I was using the speed one for so long before swapping to this that uh, I ended up spending all my augments on that. But, like I said, you could augment this for even more damage, and then I would actually recommend working in the health regen, just because it is really nice. Whereas the Nier Gigante health regen, it's like, you know, it doesn't really do much. The health regen that you get off of the uh, weapon augmentation is actually pretty significant. Some of you might say that was excessive, but come here. Give me that body. There we go. And let's. Nope. He moved. Give me a mount. No mount. What's nice is even if you miss the mount, you can see we're able to transition directly into our combo. And the tail is off. That's one of the fantastic things about Glaives, is you will cut tails without even trying. Like, just just dancing around on the monster's back, you'll notice tail cuts constantly. And there's our mount, and now a little dance around the back again. And we knocked him down. Max our stamina, mark his face. He's about to. Where are your, where are your face. Oh, is he flying away? Oh, he is. That sucks. Usually you hear the music transition. I was trying to wait on that and pop him with a uh, flash pop before he got too far, but. Unfortunately, I was not able to do it, but that's okay. Might take off flight again. Let's see. Oh no, he's gonna just go to sleep. So we don't have a really good wake up. We'll just go on and start tearing him apart. Same as kind of with the dual blades, you don't have a good wake up attack. down. Let's get ahead and get our white sharpness back. Wanted to get the white there. But if you do uh, end up getting orange and you miss your white, you know, it's not the end of the world. Just go ahead and pick three buffs up. Um... I'd rather, you know, do that than throw away the orange. And you can always redirect the Kinsect as well. You know, if you get orange and you really want a white, you can redirect it. Um, but because, you know, this fight's about to be done anyway, as you can see, uh, I'm not really that worried about redirecting it. You know, he, he was already limping. One minute was more than enough to clean this fight on up. So it wasn't really like I needed to, uh, to you know, redirect to pick up white and then pull in orange a minute later. But... I mean, as you guys can see, that was pretty cut and dry for Niger Rathalos. You know, we were constantly on him while he was in the air. We were easily staying on the target. I mean, and that's all there really is to the Insect Glaive. You know, you just, you have such a high uptime on targets because, you know, land or air, it doesn't matter. You're going to stay on him. That it really is a fantastic weapon. And honestly, I, like, I stand by my word that it is incredibly fun. If not the most fun you'll have playing with Monster Hunter, just because 
You know, typically stuff takes off into the air, and you're like, oh, now I gotta go chase it. And, you know, like, yeah, he retreated and he went all the way up there, but, you know, typically a Rathalos fight, they're just flying around all over the place, and you're like, Does some somebody get a flash pod and get this freaking thing out of the air. Insect Glaive, you're just like, you wanna fly? Let's fly. So, it really is a, a ton of fun to play, and on top of that, just a fantastic weapon all around. So, either way, that is going to wrap things up for my Insect Glaive build. So, uh, the other day we did a 24-hour stream. Uh, that'll be up pretty soon. It's taken a while for YouTube to fully process that. But if you want a sneak peek at some upcoming builds, make sure to look through that. Uh, as for the next build to showcase, I'm not sure which one I want to do next, but I have uh, both Longsword and Lance are going to be coming up. So which one of those comes first? I don't know. But they will both be up relatively soon, and then those will be followed by the Hammer and the Greatsword. So, as always, thanks for watching. Any questions you guys have, or just general comments, drop them down below. And we will catch you guys with our next Monster Hunter World Build Showcase.